Hi, thanks for joining us for the Family Plots, Gardening in the Mid-South. I'm Chris Cooper. Lettuce in January, cabbage in December, it's hydroponics, and today we're going to build a system from scratch. That's just ahead on the Family Plots, Gardening in the Mid-South. Production funding for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South is provided by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. To the Family Plots. I'm Chris Cooper. Joining me today is Stefan Leonard. Stefan is an Extension Master Gardener right here in Shelby County. And Scott Dakarski is here. Scott is our hydroponic expert. Thanks for joining us. Thank Thanks you for having us. us. Now, Stefan, you were on here before talking about hydroponics and hydroponic systems. So why do hydroponics anyway? Well, let's just say you actually don't have the space to have a garden. Hydroponics is a great thing that you can actually have in your home, um, set up your own climate and start growing, uh, even during the winter time, winter months, during the fall, uh, year round, you can actually grow with hydroponics. Sounds good to me. I think we could do that. Now, what about building a hydroponic system? Oh, it's fairly simple, uh, a few parts, um, inexpensive, and something that you can actually assemble within an hour or two. Huh. All right, now, Scott. How do we go about setting up a hydroponic system? You want to talk about some of the parts we have here? Or? Yeah, absolutely. The okay, sure. first step is to make sure we have all of the parts okay. and everything is in order. First thing we're going to need is some kind of a storage tote. Okay. Preferably something a little bit more durable like this black and yellow tote. Okay. Just so as you move around the uh, hydroponic system, it doesn't go breaking over time and isn't, doesn't get worn down from like the lights outside or okay. what have you. And also some of the uh, smaller pieces like some of the net cups and neoprenes things that actually house the plant. And then, of course, the PVC parts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You have 10 feet of pipe that will roughly make a tote. Usually a little bit more than 10 feet is needed. Um, a few elbows and some tees. <laughs> okay. And that's just to make the actual frame of the spray system inside of the tote. Okay. All right, so you want to get started on building a system for yeah, us? Yeah, absolutely. Right, let's, let's get go it going, ahead. man. All right, let's get it going. Uh, will you hand me the tape measure, Stefan? All right, the first step is to open up the tote and get some measurements of the inside. Okay. That way we can go ahead and start measuring and cutting our PVC. All right. I'll take that. Thank you. All right, and a good way to start is gonna be to get the width measurements. And how you wanna do this is you just wanna go, what the uh, PVC frame will do is actually sit down, recessed about two inches. So we're gonna come down about two inches and it looks like we're gonna be right at about 16 and a half on width. We'll go ahead and get the length measurement as well. Here, why don't you come to right there? Yeah. Okay. About 26 and three okay. quarter inches. All right, all right. So that'll be the good base. And what makes up the tote is the PVC. And how that frame works is we have elbows on each side, or each corner, and then we will have T's on the bottoms. And then in the middle, we have the downspout for our water pump. Ah, gotcha. Okay. And then that'll pretty much look just like that. Hmm. And then these few pieces will be for the pump and to screw into the pump. And that's the basic layout of <laughs> okay. how the total work. All right, so the first step is going to be to cut the pieces of PVC that'll fit in between these T's. So what we're gonna do, it looks like for 16 and a half inches, we'll need about four and a quarter inch PVC, pi PVC pipe to fit in between each one of these things. Okay. Cool, and we will get cutting. You wanna do some cutting, Chris? Hey, I can try. Excellent, cool. I can do that. We can take that, that, and what we'll do, let's go ahead and grab this piece of PVC, and we'll start measuring. We'll do four and, it looks like a quarter. So if you wanna make a mark right about there, Chris. Right, right there, you? Absolutely. Yeah, and we'll make six of these. Okay. Uh -huh. All right, and that is the start of the tote. Well and what we want to do before we make all six is we'll make one side of the tote. And we'll go ahead and check it with the inside diameter just to make sure that we're on track. Okay, okay. Right. And since we're not going to be using any PVC glue, we want to go ahead and just smash these together real quick. That way everything's nice and snug, and we want to check that and make sure it fits the phone. All right. Awesome. 
and you do want a little bit of a snug fit just because things aren't glued together and that way it doesn't pop off. Okay, right? gotcha. We'll just go ahead and do that one more time. Okay. So those are our ends done. And next thing we're gonna do is measure the inside. So we're gonna do these 12 inch pieces. We're gonna do four of those. And one big reason we're using these cutters like we are instead of a saw or what have you is because when you go to cut PVC like that, mm -hmm. it'll turn into a fine dust. Right, I've seen and that. That's, okay. that's the bane of any hydroponic system. And it's really just a few simple pieces and the tote starts to come together on its own. Yeah, it sure is. And now we're gonna cut two 25 inch sections, uh -huh. sections for the outside. Hmm. All right. All right. Go ahead and put these on. And then what we're gonna do now is we're gonna build the downstem for the pump. So that consists of a T, and this is gonna sit in the middle, like this, and it's just gonna serve as a downstem. And then we will cut a few pieces to hook all of this together. Okay. We're gonna make one and three quarter inch pieces. We're gonna do two of those to fit on the inside of this. So it'll just snugly fit in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a bevel, there's a okay. bevel on in the inside of each one of the fittings, and it's Three quarters of an inch. Okay, I got you. So that oh, yeah, way your it. pipe slides in and stops. Okay. Go ahead and throw that in there. All right. Let me face that. Let's face it up. Yeah. All right. Yeah, cool. Now let's check it. Yeah, it's looking like it's just a little bit long. Like I said, each tote's gonna be just a tiny bit different. Right. Maybe let's start with a half inch. Half inch. Okay. Just so we don't take too much mm -hmm. off. Look at that. That is what we want. You want it to fit in there a little a little snug okay. just so it doesn't move around or anything okay. like that. Right. Cool. And that is the basis of the spray frame. Okay. And our next right. step is gonna be to mark our holes and then tap and dive them. All right, for Sweet. our sprayers. Indeed. We're gonna have three sprayers on each one of the ends, and then this long end's gonna have three, and then we'll have two on each one of these. Okay. And we have two different kinds of sprayers that go into these totes. We have 180 degrees, and you can see that they have a 180 degree plane yeah, of spray. See. That way you're not hitting the back of the tote and causing any backsplash that would encourage it to leak. Okay. So yeah. these will be placed on the Outer and, outer yeah, ends. and these okay. will go on the outer okay. ends. Okay. Spraying in. We have a 330 degree. It has two directions of spray instead of just the one from the 180. That way you can get both sides. Okay. And those will go on each one of these. Okay. Because what we found in these that we can have such prolific root growth that the roots will get so dense they'll create dry pockets on the inside. Okay. So you have to have plenty of these just to get around all those nicks and curves. And it doesn't have to be perfect. All you really okay. want to do is just try and center them as much as possible. So we'll put one there, one there, and we'll go ahead and just repeat this for all of them. And try and get them as straight as you, you can, but it's not too big of a deal. Right. And these are going to be our tools for making the sprayers. This is uh -huh. uh, just a regular drill bit. Okay. It's going to be 10 24th tap and a die. So what we do, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, we're gonna drill out each one of these holes, and once those are done, we're gonna clear them all out. And then we're gonna go back with the die, and that's actually how we're gonna achieve the thread. Okay. And one thing I would like to caution people about is when you are drilling the holes, make sure you get it as straight up and down as possible. Because if you don't, sometimes the sprayers will have a tendency to leak. All right, now that we have all the holes, we can go through putting the threads. Mm -hmm. All right, when you do this, you want to put your drill on the lowest setting just so you don't grind up the threads. Okay. You turn it down a little bit, and then again, straight up and down as possible. And you're just slow about it. Mm -hmm. That is essentially how this works. And this drill bit, it'll be a tight fit at first. But at the very tip of it, it'll start to cut away at the hole just to help increase that diameter a little bit. And then the 
threads will start to take over okay. after that. Uh -huh. And then when you do bring it back up, you just kind of let the drill carry itself because if you pull too much, you'll mess up the threads. You don't have to go too much, just maybe a quarter of an inch in the PVC, just enough to get the threads. And then again, when you do come out, just slow. And then make sure you try and clear away all this little debris, because if you mm -hmm. do get that in there, they'll tend to clog up these sprayers, and then you'll have fun. Okay. All right, that was the last hole, right? Yep, last hole. Now all we have to do is get it cleaned out, and we can throw the sprayers in it, and then we can get to cutting up the tote. Uh -oh. Ah, here you go. Yes. <laughs> be forceful with it. Yeah. Make sure we lay everything out so we don't get it mixed up. Yeah, you can see the the debris on the inside, and all we got, all we want to do is just take the bamboo and knock that off, okay. so it doesn't inhibit the system later on. A little bit came out of here. Yeah. yeah. Good to go. Yeah. That came out of that one. Yeah. Cool. Now back to assembly. Indeed. Now, let's install the sprayers. We're going to put these 180 degrees on the outside just so we don't get any backsplash when we put them in the tote. And most of these parts are fairly cheap at your local hydroponic store. The sprayers, they're 30 cents. Okay. The neck cups and neoprenes, they're 25 to 30 cents each as well. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure for the downspout that connects the pump to the sprayer manifold. And how we're gonna do that is we're just gonna set this in here, how it would naturally lay. About two inches down in there. And then we will get the pump. Stick that bad boy right there. <laughs> you wanna come help us out, Chris? Yeah. Cool, you wanna measure for me? Let's measure from the bottom of this to the to top in, of the pump. In it? No, okay, just right, right there. there. Yeah. Okay. You see that? Cool, seven and a quarter inches. Cool. All right, so we got seven and a quarter inches. And we still have to account for that three quarters of an inch difference on each one of these sides. Oh, cool. So what we're gonna do to account for those differences, we're gonna take two and a quarter off of this. All right, cool, and what we're gonna do with this, let me see those one more time. So we're just gonna cut it into two pieces, one a little bit longer than the other. And what the smaller piece will serve as is the part that actually stays connected to the pump, which okay. is why we have this half inch coupling right here. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. And then we screw our half inch adapter to this, and this will actually be what connects to the pump. Uh huh. Okay. And that fits that on, on there. Top. Okay. Yep. I got you. That way it's seamless when we have this uh, just sitting on top. On top. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yep. And it makes disconnecting rather easy. Right. That way you can take it out. Yeah. Inside. Yeah, we can set that inside and, and see where it stands. Indeed. <laughs> You can see it kind of, it bulges up just a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a half inch off of this downstem, just so we can go ahead and get a nice little even plane. Okay. Because what this is, what the spray manifold doubles as is also support for the net cups when you get big mature plants and fruit also. Okay. Right. Cool. And that is the completed spray manifold. How about that? All right, we have two different sizes, two different size hole saws for the uh, drain and the power plug hole. The power plug hole gets the one inch. And try and get it as close to the top of it as you can. You can even come in here and kind of tilt it up a little bit, get it started, and then level it out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put a hole right here as close to the bottom as we can. We don't wanna get too close to this lid, mm -hmm. or otherwise it won't have a good seal. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll come about halfway And we're going to want to make sure that we clear up all these little frazzles, yeah, little frazzles. Little frazzles yeah. and stuff. And then sometimes these can be a little bit tricky to get in. <laughs> this is a half inch grommet. And grommet. what this does is it creates a watertight seal between the elbow and the actual body of the toe. Okay. That way we don't get any leakage. All right. 
And that is gonna be your drain. Yeah, how about that? We're gonna hook our 10 inch drain up to the elbow. And then we're just gonna put the elbow into the grommet. All right. Bring it down just a little bit. And you bring it in until you get it set up against the uh, barrier right there. Okay, I see it. And that is your drain finished. Uh, wh all right, what we do with the drain is you tilt it like this and just let it drain naturally. All right, so our next step is gonna be to cut the holes in the top of the tote for housing our net cups. Okay. And if you would, would you hand me our cheat sheet? I will definitely do that. Excellent. I like cheat sheets. I do too. Yeah, do that. All right. As you can see, this uh, specific tote has 12 net cups. Okay. There are 12 sites for each one of the net cups. Let's come in here and cut each one of these. Okay. Uh, and we will use those for guides. All right. And then we can start drilling our holes. All right. It's a good idea to have someone. All right, and now that we've drilled our holes, the next thing we want to do is go ahead and clear all the debris from the holes, and then we'll be ready to put some water in it, make sure everything is watertight. All right. All right, now that we have everything done for the tote, we have the tote, the top of the tote cut. Okay. We have the PVC manifold built, and we've connected some PVC to the pump. Now it's time to throw everything together. And our first step right now is to be, gonna be to fill the basin with some water. All right. So St Stefan, if you wanna grab that other bucket. We do have water. All right. All right. Yep. And how much do we need to fill it? We need about 10 gallons of water to get a uh, proper head pressure out of the sprayers. All right. I'm gonna grab the pump and let's load it in. All right. Let you. You stick the cord out of the cord hole in the back. Mm -hmm. Feed it on around. All right, cool. All right. Connect up the PVC manifold. Should be good to go. Slide that in. Ah, so now we have power. Oh, look at that. Yeah. yeah. I feel like we need to turn it up a little bit. With the diaphragm. Yep. Nice. The tote is watertight, and as you can see, there's nothing coming out of the cord hole, so everything's good to go. All right. And all we do now is throw the top on, and we can put some net cups and some plants in it. And that is a tote. Cool. And our next step is going to be to put the net cups in there. Okay. That's all we'll do. They each take 12. And what do these do? These actually support the plant. So okay. this is what we're going to plant in, okay. essentially. And these are gonna be our neoprene collars. This is actually what holds the plant instead of the alternative like expanded clay media or vermiculite or perlite or whatever. Okay. All right, now that we have everything set up, our next step is gonna to be to put some plants in it. Hey, let's get the plants in there. Cool, I actually brought some plants. Can you tell us what you brought? Absolutely. All right, here on this end, we have some San, Mar San Marzano tomatoes. Okay. And right here, we're gonna have cinnamon basil and then Thai basil and another San Marzano tomato, some Genovese basil, a sugar baby watermelon, a purple beauty bell pepper, and a cucumber. Okay. And the only thing we're gonna do to plant these is just set it down in there. We might just take this off. We'll set it down in the net cup. Okay. And then just- But before you do that, can you tell us what you have here? Just at the bottom of your- Okay, yeah. Tomato plant. This is gonna be uh, rock wool. Okay. It's, uh, hydroponic planting material. It's just molten rock spun like fiberglass, so it's nothing crazy. It's gonna be inert. It won't have tendencies to raise or lower pH. Okay. It's just a good material. And as you can see, our clones have some roots coming out of the bottom already. Mm -hmm. So I these are already that. mature plants and okay. they're ready to be transplanted. All right. Just set the neoprene around the plant. Neop neoprenes are a soft material, so they're not gonna harm the plant at all or pinch the stem. And there you have it. 
And it is important to note that limitations with this system plant-wise are going to be root vegetables like potatoes and onions and okay. things like that. But um, every, anything that will grow above the surface, like tomatoes, cucumbers, pickles, bell peppers, every, anything like that, it'll grow quite prolifically. Okay. How about that? All right, and that is the tote. That's all it is. Real simple, not a whole lot there. Definitely looks good, Absolutely. fellas. Appreciate the demonstration. Yeah, no problem. Thanks no, for thank having you us. Much. Thanks for being here. All right, thanks. All right. Soulless mix. We hear yeah. that term a lot, yeah, right? Yeah, we do. We really do. And we we throw that around a lot. <laughs> uh -huh. But then you know what's even a misnomer more is people go and they'll say, well, I'm going to go buy some pot and soil. <laughs> right. You know, most of what they're buying nowadays is not soil. You know, right. it doesn't have any <laughs> feel soil in it. It's uh, things like peat and um, perlite oh, and vermiculite, yeah. right. maybe even some sand or bark. You know, so it's not soil, it's, you know, from the garden you dig up, and it's not like that. So, soilless mix are things, mixes, commercial mixes mm -hmm. that we buy for our pots and things like that that contains no soil. No. You know, sometimes they'll have a fertilizer charge mm -hmm. in them, you know, for a while, and they're really great because they've got all of the properties you want in a good soil. All right, here's our Q&A session. And Scott, if you have something to say, just jump in there with us, all right? All right. All right, here's our first viewer email. Am I washing out the nutrients when I water my raised bed? And this is from Dan in Horn Lake, Mississippi. So, Stefan, I know you do a lot of work with raised beds yeah, uh, for the Shelby County School System. What, what do you think about that question? Are you actually washing out the nutrients in your raised beds? No, you're not. Okay. Your plants will actually absorb the nutrients that it actually takes. Now, you'll be washing away all the nutrients that it does not need. Okay. And also getting rid of the salt buildup. Sure. So it's actually a good thing to water those nutrients away. Okay. And you're definitely right about the salts. I mean, fertilizers are salts. Mm -hmm. You know, so they, they need to be flushed out of the system every Absolutely. once in a while. Uh -huh. uh, so, yeah, Mr. Dan, don't worry about that. You're not going to be washing out your nutrients at all. Uh -huh. All right. So here's our next uh, viewer email. This plant is growing in my lawn. What is it and how do I kill it? Okay, good picture there. Folks, that would be Virginia button weed. It is a difficult, difficult weed to control. As you can see, it grows pretty low, mm -hmm. okay, prostate to the ground, right? Uh, produces by seed, root fragment. It's a perennial. Wow. So it's a low-growing perennial weed, so it's going to come back year after okay. year. Uh, the thing about Virginia burnt weed is this. It is an indicator of wet or moist soils. Again, indicator of too wet or moist soils, okay? Uh, it forms a mat on the ground pretty much and then those leaves will go from green to yellow and it's a virus that causes it to go from the green color leaves to the yellow color leaves. Uh -huh. All right. Again, hard to control. Uh, since you do have it, I always like to talk about cultural practices, Stefan, you know that. Yeah. Uh, you know, about aerating, uh, you know, fertilizing according to your soil tests and, you know, things like that. But since you already have it there, you want to know how to kill it. Post-emerge broadleaf weed killer is what you're going to have to use for that. Okay. Uh -huh. Anything that you know, pretty much contains 2,4-D, dicamba, and MCPP, okay? All of those are broadleaf weed killers, okay? And you will find those in products like TriMac or We Be Gone Max. Read and follow the label on that. Uh, you're gonna, it's going to be multiple applications. Yeah, absolutely. Multiple applications, right? Because, yeah. again, this is a very difficult weed to control. So there it is, Virginia Button Weed. And it has a beautiful uh, white flower, actually shaped like a star. Oh, wow. But when it gets, you know, Into to that flower part, absolutely. Yeah, seeds. then you, yeah, yeah, then you yeah. get spread. Yeah, then it spread. So, be careful. All right. Here's our next viewer email. What is this? It came on the first blossom on a cucumber. There are no other related plants nearby unless something wild pollinated it. Want a taste? <laughs> and this is from <laughs> Phil Shelby Forest. Uh, I don't want to taste that. Uh, I don't <laughs> want to taste that. I can say that now. Uh, but, Stefan, what do you think? Uh, anything uh, comes to mind when you see it, that? It could be a lot of things. Uh, for it to be the first bloom, um, it could be a nutrient imbalance, or it could be weather, um, the weather conditions. Uh, it could be a lot of factors that could affect it going okay. forward. Okay. A uh, couple of things, you know, uh, come to mind for me. You know, insufficient moisture, you know, mm -hmm. a moisture stress is something that I think about. 
Uh, the second thing, too much fertilizer can actually do that, you know, to really? fruits, right? Too much fertilizer. Okay. But this is a cucumber, right? So I'm thinking about yeah. cucumber mosaic virus, which is actually spread by aphids. Okay. okay. Because the fruit itself is deformed and it has different colors. So that's why I thought virus. It, it'll help if we could actually see the plant because mm -hmm. you have a stunted plant. Of course, that plant might have some lesions on the, you know, the stem on the leaves. But just looking at the cucumber itself, the different colors, uh, possibly could be cucumber mosaic virus. And here's another one I just thought about. How about poor pollination? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I can you know? see that. Poor pollination, especially when you have hot and dry conditions, because you do have dead pollen and live pollen. Right, so you can actually get a fruit from the live pollen, but the dead pollen won't let it produce all the way through. Wow. Oh, wow. Right. Okay. So it could be, you know, a lot of different factors. All right. So look at your plant, inspect it for aphids. Uh, make sure you don't have a lot of weeds growing around your plants. Uh, you know, get those out of there because the aphids can hang around in those uh, weeds as well. Um, but that's what I think. That's what I think. So, Scott. Stefan, we're out of time. Thanks for being here today. Yeah, oh, thanks thanks for having us. All right, no problem. Remember, we love to hear from you. Send us an email or letter. The email address is familyplot at wkno.org, and the mailing address is familyplot 7151 Cherry Farms Road, Cordova, Tennessee 38016. Or you can go online to familyplotgarden.com. That's all we have time for today. We have posting and equipment list for the hydroponics project on familyplotgarden.com. I'm Chris Cooper. Be sure to join us next week for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Be safe.